Hello folks, my name is Hippocrisite and this is another episode of Equestria at War as the Griffonian Empire. So, um, in the previous episode we've read a lot, like all of uh, those, uh, those focuses, focuses were actually lore related and uh, there was not much else to do and right now we've managed to get through all, the, all of this and we have all those delicious focuses to be taken care of and uh, I've been thinking about what to do next because there is a lot of stuff to do as I've said um, we have to um, unlock all of uh, the um, army uh, or war related uh, focuses which uh, requires us to um, for example do the support the Reich's army or yeah the second one is also related to Reich's army uh, also there is a there is a, an illiteracy problem so uh, both of those uh, branches are actually very important also we have our industrial branch which is crucial so um, actually I have no idea where to start the main thing about Equestria at War is that it gives you a lot of content and that's a good thing and the bad thing is that it gives you a lot of content <laughs> because actually I don't know what to do right now uh, if I want wanna do industrial stuff or if I want to get rid of all of those um, uh, maluses because yeah well um, it's it's really difficult to, to think about it but I think that um, I'll go with dealing with the bureaucrats because it will uh, get rid of my bloated bureaucracy uh, malice which is like crippling for my economy and all of other country related stuff and then uh, we will go with the literacy campaign and I'll you no know, read any uh, law related event that will go with it and uh, I believe that uh, there will be some uh, interesting stuff going uh, around because right now it's the time of uh, breaking of the Reichspakt and uh, I think uh, Gabriela would go with this part of uh, Fithesia, Stro Strawberry Duchy and uh, Bronze Hill when all of those uh, uh, countries will go with their own uh, faction. So without further ado let's go and deal with the bureaucrats. Okay, we have an, another law related event. The Imperial Banquet. The Imperial Banquet is an ancient Griffonian tradition that dates back to the glory days of the Empire. Every 10 years, nobles from all corners of the Empire would assemble at the capital of Griffenheim to spend one, sometimes, sometimes even two, joyful evenings together. This helped strengthen our ties with many dukes and princes of the Empire and allowed the Emperor to improve relations with them. The next banquet is scheduled in just a few weeks, but our court is unsure about the exact, exact procedures. Considering our weakened hold over the continent, it is unsure whether we should invite only those nobles still loyal to the Empire, or whether we should extend a claw to all who once were under our banner as a sign of goodwill. Uh, so, um, it's, it's, it's a difficult choice. Actually, I haven't uh, haven't ever chose haven't ever chosen this uh, this option because I always went with a grand feast for all 
and uh, it's always went horrible like it's only some of even some of my vassals would come so I think that uh, I'll go with the first one and then we'll see what will happen the banquet <coughs> <coughs> sorry the night went along smoothly carriage after carriage arrived in front of the imperial palace the most important of which were greeted by the regent, Duchess Gabriela Eagleclaw, and even young Gro Grover Sixth himself. This banquet was cr clearly one of the smaller ones, and the mood seemed to be sour at first. Soon, however, the more memories of old returned to our guests, and the celebrations began. Games were played, words were exchanged, jokes were made. At the start of the great feast, the Duchess made a great speech. She spoke of ages long past, and how it was the Empire's duty to carry on and reclaim its legacy and destiny. In the end, three cheers were had for our young Emperor. We've made our resolve clear. So actually, it went better than the second one, which was actually, you know, when you invite a lot of your friends to a party and uh, in the end, you you're just sitting in front of I don't know TV or computer with like three of your friends, and the list of invited people was like thirty. <laughs> so uh, yeah, well, I think that it went better than expected. The Archon's defiance. After securing a victory for the nobility in, in the, the Regency Council and alienating both the Eastern vassals and three Archons, things were finally somewhat stabilizing in the Imperial capital, until today that is. During a regular meeting at, of the Council, Archons Eros and Proteus promptly denounced Duchess Gabriela and her allies as heathens and traitors and later left the capital. They were shortly afterwards joined by the Senator of Romau, Rector Magnificus of Yeldom, and the Baron of Angriva. Several hours after these events, they all formally declared this, their secession from the Empire. Soon, news arrived from Old Wingburg as well, about the local peasant council refusing to recognize a noble as the regent and formally declaring independence. Meanwhile, Catherine remains ominously silent, and no one knows what is taking place in those dark marshes. Curse you, Archons and traitors! So, uh, yeah, like the whole east, southeast uh, seceded from, from the Reichspact. And that hurts a bit, but yeah, we'll reconquer you later. Okay, so deal with the bureaucrats, focus have been completed, and now we'll go with uh, start a little literacy campaign. But. Uh, I also think about uh, support of the Reich's army because uh, I don't know if it will shorten the uh, decline in Zoiberung um, because it is uh, how long? Ah, uh, well, a few a few months. So ah, we'll go with the Lidaris campaign. It will gradually remove the mass illiteracy, so it's yeah, it won't be like uh, immediate, but I think we we should address that as soon as possible. You know, I sometimes wonder if uh, if the developers of the mod actually know what Sushenko means. Or how it may be uh, perceived, because <laughs> uh, yeah, well, it's it's a Slavic thing, because uh, yeah, for example, in Polish, suszyć means uh, to dry, and we all know what pantsu means, so yeah, of ponies and changelings. The morning of Griffenheim tended to be surprise surprisingly peaceful. It seemed that despite all the hustle and bustle of the city, 
The Griffins still valued their slow mornings, and as such, they tended to become quite alarmed when something out of the ordinary happened. This is exactly what happened that morning, as an equestrian tourist ran desperately through the streets. They are coming! Run! Run everybody! Run for your lives! Their screams echoed throughout the massive streets of the capital and caused quite a stir. Mistakenly, many assumed that the treacherous communicate had sa uh, staged an uprising, or that a Wingardian commando group had been sent to assassinate the Emperor. As the pony ran through the streets, they eventually reached the Imperial Palace, where they claimed to have information a grave security threat. After eventually screaming their way in, they forced themselves into the Imperial meeting room to speak to, or more likely scream at, the regent. But as they opened the doors to the meeting room, the pony fainted out of shock and left the region and changed the and changeling ambassador, which the region had been meeting with, quite shocked. After recovering, the pony alarmed that they had spotted changelings ready to attack and that they could be disguised as anyone, of course. This all happened in front of... Oh, wait, no. After recovering, the pony claimed that they had spotted changelings ready to attack and that they could be disguised as anyone, of course, this all happened in front of the changeling ambassador. The pony was shortly, shortly escorted out and told to be more tolerant and friendly to other races. How rude! What's about those iry and eerie? It's like the second war now. <laughs> Irion's takeover of Romau. Following the inability of the Roman city council to restore order, the Archon himself has stepped in and, take di and taken direct control supported by religious fanatics and royal Irit knights. With his help, the Romulan authorities were able to put down mass riots and protesters. To ensure that peace and stability remains, Archon Irion has disbanded the Senate and formed a government of his own, which he promises to be temporary, albeit few believe him. The council has lost the battle, and Archon Irion now rules the city of Roma. Terrible news! And why I lose political power because of this? Like, it should be a um, Roma, uh, you know, internal affair. Yeah, whatever. Our friends, the Greifval Greifvaldians. Count Claudette of Gry Greif. I don't know how to pronounce it, if I should pronounce it like uh, with a German style or with an um, English accent, I don't know. Count Claudette of Greifwald, who has recently sent a diplomatic mission to Griffenheim, has, sent, has seen it fit to propose that we help further the economic ties by opening up trade between the Empire and his small nation, citing how much it would curb Aquileia influence in the region. What should we do? Hmm... Yeah, well... I think we'll go with uh, Annoying Aquilia. No more coins from Skyfall. Today, unlike previous years, the Empire Imperial Foreign Affairs Ministry didn't receive any letter from Skyfall, at least none com containing any coins. It seems that after the demise of Chancellor Gouchard, the new leaders of Skyfall had little interest in pursuing his peculiar form of humor. That joke shall not be missed. So, another fo focus has been done. And... Uh, I really don't know where to go right now. But maybe I... I think that we should uh, unlock uh, the uh, army, uh, army branch. And pony power will... Uh, will be of great help, but... I think it should be Griffin power here. Bronzehill breaks with Griffenheim. In a shocking move, Bronzehill has refused to back either claimants to the regency of the Griffonian Empire. Count Ignatius Bronstail has announced this morning that while they remain loyal to the Emperor, they cannot sit by and watch him to be fought over like a piece of like a prize by greedy griffins who seek to only advance their own objectives and wealth. 
Count Ignatius Bronstale went so far as to suggest that Bronskill should take the regency, claiming that the only beings who could truly rule the empire justly in the name of the emperor are those whose loyalty to the emperor is unquestionable. Griffenheim and Strawberry have denounced the move as a great betrayal to the empire. Bad dogs! Bronskill abandons the empire. The Bronskill representatives came to us and bore grievous news. They have decided to abandon the Empire. They voice their protest against our actions, claiming that the Griffins are trying to take power from the Emperor for themselves. The Ducks do not wish to take a side in this ordeal, but instead to seek their own path, astray from the Empire. We believed they were loyal subjects, but as the predicament shows, we were wrong. Send these ambassadors home. Tell them that we don't have anything to do with treacherous Ducks they are. Bronze Hill will yet regret their decision. So much for loyalty. Okay, so f so we've supported uh, the Reich's army, and now we've uh, unlocked this uh, branch of the focus tree. And I think where should we go now? So maybe we'll go with uh, with the industry, and after that. We'll go with this part, just to unite the nation and uh, uh, get a bit more of more, more of uh, factories because this is strawberry right? Uh, uh -huh, okay, so three, four. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! That's a lot of of. Uh, uh, the factories yeah or maybe we'll go uh, okay we'll go already with this with this path so maybe the first as the first to uh, establish the industry rats will go and we don't have the great the small purge anymore yeah so the industry industry rat industry rat uh, have been has been established and uh, I think that I won't uh, comment on uh, any other focuses because it takes a bit of time and as I've said I will read any law related uh, events so uh, until unite the nation if there won't be any you know events that uh, require my attention i will just skip to it and uh, see you in a bit the imperial literacy campaigns begin while grover the fifth did much to improve literacy rates within the empire his work was left unf was left unfinished by his unfortunate and untimely death now that order uh, has been established and the determined region leads the nation, we can continue where he left off. Literacy campaigns have been initiated and education reforms extensively, with many new teachers hired especially from Yale. Schools are already built across the country and will be available for every griffin regardless of class. While all this is a drain for of blah, blah, blah. while all this is a drain on the coffers, it will un ultimately be worth it, as an educated populace is a productive populace. It's a start. And we will have just negligible literacy. So uh, everything will be a bit more faster. A bit faster. A strange day in Griffenheim. The Imperial Director for Internal Security was not a happy Griffin. He rarely was, as the Imperial capital is a hotbed of, of assassinations, plot to overthrow the government and foreign spies, and as such his position was not an enviable one. But today was proving to be a particularly difficult. As he sat in his office questioning a, f a new hire about the recent deba debacle? debacle in the capital. Apparently, the problems had st started early, earlier this that morning when gunfire could audibly 
could be audibly heard from one of uh, the many abandoned buildings in the outskirts of the capital. After a team was sent to investigate the site, it was discovered empty, save for hundreds of bullet casings. Strangely enough, it seems that both sides had used guns of the same make. It was not long after that an undercover officer reported in, stating that during the, his infiltration into one of the many banking cabals that controlled the capital, he had been part of the event that morning. It seems that during a meeting with the other members, they encountered changeling spies who had apparently decided to utilize the same building as a meeting spot. What followed was a short gunfight before the two sides realized before the two sides realized that as per their weapons they worked for the same employer and promptly stopped shooting at each other. Said employer was in actually a front set by the Ministry of Internal Security and was apparently supposed to provide insight into the criminal world of Gruchenheim. This had come as a surprise to the director as he had no records of ever supplying any changelings through that particular front. He ultimately chalked, up, uh, chalked it up to the bureaucrat's nightmare that is the capital, but it seemed that somehow he was responsible. In the end, only one decision was made. Whatever he did, he sure as hell wasn't about to do it again. Griffenheim is an interesting city. So, United Nations focus uh, has been completed, and now we'll see what happens. Ne Oh, okay. Oh, well, all right. So, the strawberry dashi was uh, next, or has been next, and we have an event. Fethesia politely refuses. It seems that Duke Gerlach has somehow taken our demand to formally rejoin the Empire as something he can politely refuse. Additionally, he has politely ended his country's vassalage and servitude to the Empire. What is our response? Should we politely declare war or we politely step back? I think that you know what we are going to do now. We have uh, 14 days before this event f backfires or something like that. <laughs> so we'll just grab our infantry and we'll march into Rotendedam in a day. But will it be enough? No, it won't be. Uh, okay, so... I should draw this plan like this and we have to withdraw our knights from there and it's perfect. And you will go... Um, wait, okay so here is their capital. So you will go to Al... 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 Al or whatever. Okay, so they haven't mobilized yet. Uh, well, how how many troops do you have? From fourteen to twenty-three. I don't see it right now. I have four days. Okay, you are f ready to go. Yeah, well. I told you that we are going to have a bit more interesting episode today, so... <laughs> okay, so let's go! Yeah, as I thought, it just goes smoothly. Or as smooth as it gets. Uh, go here, maybe. And... Pin him. And now we'll encircle them. Go here. It's great. And just melt them. Oh, whoa, 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 dude, dude, dude. No, 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 no. Help him. Help him right now. <laughs> Uh, 
Woo. So today I've uh, I've dodged a bullet. Oh, here's my Panzer guy. Okay, so maybe I'll pop you here and the spearhead to rotten the dumb. That's great. Stop up for a moment because you have no idea what you are doing right now. Yeah, I managed. I've managed to. Uh, lessen his troop count a bit. Yeah, let's just push a bit. Okay, my focus is done. I will go with the crash tile because uh, I'd like to have a bit more steel on my hand. Okay, so they are ready. And. I still have factories to spend. Yeah. Well, tanks are actually important right now, so... You'll get a bit more. Uh, yeah, we'll go with the war propaganda. Bronze Hill nationalizes imperial assets. Assets, should I say. Much of Bronze Hill industrial infra infrastructure and mining assets are owned and operated by firms based in Griffenheim. This is due to the Imperial Court having a vested interest in overseeing the economy of Bronze Hill for the benefit of its citizens. However, recently there has been a talk of nationalizing these assets, with claims of mismanagement and that not enough economic benefit remains in Bronze Hill. If this course of action is allowed to reach the conclusion, this would mean a massive loss of monetary assets by some of our leading firms. Currently, the Imperial Court is divided between approaching this diplomatically and issuing a strongly worded protest against our vassal and taking a more forceful approach which would uh, see us deliver a militarized reminder of our dominance. Um, Yeah, we are a bit busy right now. We'll conquer you later. Yeah, well, I don't have anything more to do, I think, because... Because my orders are doing it for me, basically. Yeah, well... They're massacring. Those, uh, those griffs. More infrastru infrastructure is uh, always good. We'll go with that. And Fithigia is ours. We'll go with Tickle States. I cannot do that. I'll pass a few times and now I can. It's beautiful. Okay, so Griffonian Empire is pretty much well not pretty much because it's not yet um, reconquered but uh, ah, I forgot about the grenadiers damn I don't want them in my country they are shit few infantry divisions with light tanks like and I cannot even delete them uh, okay but yeah whatever I think it's a great uh, time to end this episode I hope that you enjoyed it and I encourage you to like comment and subscribe to my channel and I see you guys in the next one goodbye